Um, OK, so um, my part is to explain what's coming next. So you have your OMOP CDM, but now you want to fill in some content. You want to get your vocabularies. Um, I guess most of you know what's, what this is. So the download page of Athena. Um, the download actually happens once you click here. You have pre-selected checkboxes for all uh, vocabularies that hold most of the standard concepts, and you should probably not uncheck any of these, if you want to have a working OMOP CDM, you should maybe add a couple um, if you need them. So you would uh, probably select the vocabularies that you would need in your particular setup. Good. So um, this is a, a recap of the last quick Athena tutorial that we had. So we have the defaulted vocabularies. Um, once you click download, a downloadable bundle is created from the current content. Well, whenever you click on that or go to the history of your bundles, Always the current content will be taken from Athena to create the bundle. Bundle is then a zipped file and uh, a little bit later, um, Athena will send you an email um, giving you an URL to, um, to actually download it. It looks pretty much like this um, and it lists all the vocabularies that you have selected and it will give you a link to download the zip file. Please do not share this link. Um, and uh, it also mentions something, how to process the whole thing. So one special thing is that uh, CPD4 um, is the vocabulary that is incomplete when you download it. Uh, this, is, this is also listed here, um, and uh, we will have to go through a particular step to complement and uh, complete it. Um, also, it links at the, what we call the control files or actually the, the vocabulary uh, import scripts. Um, and uh, as of now, they are not in this place anymore, but, could, but this place would actually, or this link would actually go to um, the current um, common data model. Now, uh, I'll show you uh, how you can get to the right place, and we are in the pro process of replacing this link for the time being until we have our scripts to do the vocabulary import too. Um, so um, when you want to work on the CPT4 concepts, uh, you will need to download the descriptions from your source, and this is done by using a Java tool that's also in your download. Um, to do that, you actually have to register with UMLS and get an API key copy it from your profile, um, which because you'll need that key later on to um, authenticate yourself. So um, in your download, there's a readme. It also explains again how to use the, the CPT um, tool. Um, for Windows, there's a, a batch um, and for Linux, there's a shell file to, um, to be uh, performed and executed in your particular um, set up. Um, so this is how it would look like. Uh, this is a Windows command. So you would go and go into that particular downloaded folder. Here are all your downloaded vocabularies in CSV files. Um, and then you carry out the CPT bat with your um, API key. Um, and this takes a bit of time. So um, it will uh, sequentially go through the concept CPT4 file and enrich the concept file with names. Um, there is even a log file that is being created after the whole thing, uh, which will show you what it has been processed. So um, in your OMOP CDM, the standardized vocabularies um, have these tables. And uh, if you go back, we have, um, we can, we can find them again in here. So this means we have to import the content from these tables into our vocabulary tables in the CDM. So uh, concept, that's kind of the main table. Uh, it has it, it has all the list of concepts from all vocabularies. The relationships, uh, they keep all the relationships obviously between uh, the, the concepts. Concept ancestor is a special table, it kind of uh, partially duplicates the, the relationships for concept um, hierarchies. Um, the concept synonyms can be alternative names or a different language for that particular concept. It also has a language key. The vocabulary table is 
the list of actual vocabularies that are then available in your in your CDM. Um, concept class will give you all the possible concept classes, obviously, and domains is uh, pretty stable. That's not changed very often. Uh, it's defining the domains. Um, relationships, same. Once in a while, we add a relationship uh, to it. This is a special drug extension, the drug strength, which is filled only for drug concepts um, to allow uh, strength information to be to be stored. Um, then there is still um, a table listed source to concept map, but it's actually not a vocabulary table. It's being used in ETLs locally to um, to keep a link from your local code to a standard concept. OK, um, so how does this all look like? Um, when we um, end up with, um, oops, where is it? Okay, when we end up with our um, download, that's what we have. So we need to to import them to our um, database. Um, how can I do this? So when we look at at um, the common data model GitHub, previously we had a vocabulary import section also per dialect. Right now we have to go to 531 to actually find it um, to have the, the the old SQL scripts to do that. So when we go here, then we have a vocab import folder, and within this um, folder we find what uh, would have to be executed to actually import it. Take this as um, as inspiration because you don't have to use it this way. You can also use your tools. Um, so, for example, if um, I'm now in my little virtual box here, um, if I want to import concept class again, um, I would uh, import data, um, take a CSV, uh, concept class, um, column delimiter. So that can be tricky because it's tab delimited. We, strictly speaking, you should call those TSV files. Um, but uh, those are CSV files with a tab delimiter, so you need to enter a tab in here. Uh, in DBWord, actually, it, it's quite tricky because you need to copy and paste a tab character into this. Um, once you do this, you see, OK, it finds the columns. You can preview the data. It looks good. Then you carry on, say, ah, truncate target table. Yes. Always, if you want to uh, load the vocabularies, you need to truncate the tables. Um, I do this and I proceed and it's done. So I have concept class uh, refreshed from my current vocabulary import. If you are further on in the game and you have two billion concepts, um, you would probably want to preserve those two billion concepts. So I would create shadow tables that I would store my two billion concepts temporarily, but there are probably multiple ways of dealing with that. So I would put them there in safety, update all my concept, all my vocabulary tables, then put my two billion concepts back into my vocabulary tables. OK, um, that's pretty much it. Questions? There's one question from the chat um, from Aiden. Can these be downloaded or accessed uh, with R? Say again? It was from the chat. Um, can these be downloaded or accessed from with R? With R. Um, I'll direct this question to Claire. Um, yes, I'm pretty sure they could be. I mean, not downloaded. Oh, you want to have an automated download from Athena, not like in an API where you where you trigger Athena, or what's the question? Maybe I don't understand the question. Aiden, do you want to follow up on that question, or if anybody else, we'll go maybe about two to three minutes here with questions. So okay. the files themselves, I don't think can be accessed from R, like the actual no. like vocab files. No. But the tables are part of 
the DDL script I just showed you. So when you instantiate the tables in an empty schema, it will include the empty vocabulary tables right. for you. Um, I will put a link in the chat because when I actually import uh, vocab into my own Postgres instance, um, we have a we have a, a GitHub uh, called ETL Cynthia, which is a, a ETL uh, package that converts synthetic data. Um, but there's actually a really good like vocab import section in there um, mm -hmm. that I actually use each time I import vocabulary. Um, I find it really useful. So I will, um, I'll link that. That link will be very helpful. Thanks, Claire.